This video is brought to you by DxO. Many of us have mastered the technical aspects of photography. We nail the sharpness, the exposure, the white balance, even the composition, and yet we see other photographers work, get more likes, they get more clients. People viewing photography have gotten tired of that perfect sterile look, and they're looking for a more analog look. They're looking for something retro, vintage, creative. I found some software that makes this really, really easy. The Nick collection, the new version eight. You can just watch the video, but what I would do is go to this link here and grab the trial and install it on your computer and then download the sample files from the description of this video. And then you can work alongside me and you can see how really easy it is. Now, the Nick collection is seven different software components, and I'm going to spend most of my time on my three favorite ones. The apps start independently, or they can be launched from Lightroom, and especially Photoshop now is deeply integrated, and I'll show you that in a bit. But let's just launch this right into Nick 8 Silver Effects from Lightroom. Silver Effects is black and white processing software, but it's not just desaturating images. What Silver Effects does is gives you complete control over how these images are processed in a way that really closely resembles making black and white prints from film. And that allows you to create just much more genuine, creative images that really have a glow to them. Right now, I'm just flipping through the presets. And this is where I usually just start. I just kind of want to see what sets me in the right direction. And then I go back in and customize it. I love the contrast of this and looking at it side by side with the standard, you can see just how much that contrast makes everything pop. I'm starting with one of Silver FX presets. Presets add one or more filters pre-configured for you. But then you can go in and configure each of those different filters, remove some or add more. So let's look at the filters that this particular preset added. You can see the filter adjusted the levels a little bit. And so I can fine tune that. This slider allows me to add grain in case I want to give it that film look. And notice that it's called a grad and D filter. That's a neutral density filter. It darkens part of the image that in this particular preset is implemented using this burn edges feature. I can toggle this checkbox to see the effects of it. And you can see it's using the top edge here. And this allows me to adjust the strength and the size and the evenness of the transition. Let's take a look at some of the filters that it has in it. First, if you want this to look like a film image, this is really easy to add. Just click it and now you can see that particular filter appears on the right side here. I can select real film grain to simulate here. Look at all these films in the list. And yeah, DxO put in the work to sample each of these different types of negatives, of slides, so that you can recreate that film look with just a couple of clicks with your digital image. I can adjust the grain size here by dragging this up. And then if I toggle this on and off, you can see the effect of the film grain. It really does make it look like it was taken with film. Let's add the clear view filter here. I, I love the clear view because it just adds some clarity. Another cool filter is image borders. They have 14 different types of borders from simple to rustic and sort of hand torn that can match the style of the image. And for example, if this time I'm going for something that looks like it was a print from a dark room, then maybe I want a border that emphasizes that too. In a side by side comparison here, I've created a new image that has an entirely different feel and will appeal to a different customer base. I have something now that feels more like the Ansel Adams era of landscape photography. I want to check out silver effects with a portrait too. Right away, it feels like a classic image. Flipping through the presets, I just want to find an inspiring place to start. I think I found it. I like the highlight fade here. Compared to the default, it raised up the shadows some, brought out her far eye a little bit. I can see a little more texture in her shirt. And this time I'm going to burn the edges just a little bit. I'm going to do all edges soft and bring the attention back onto her. Comparing that to the original image, you can see it's a completely different feel. One feels very modern and the other feels very classic. For the next shot, let's go into Photoshop. And here, I want to use the Nick collection to separately edit the sky and the foreground. Photoshop allows the use of layers and even AI to do those selections, so I can use all of that in Nick. First, I will duplicate this layer. 
and then select sky. Let's make that a mask. I'll open up the plugins panel here. You can see you can access it right from Photoshop and use color effects. And you can see it's acknowledging the mask. I can go through and just click these presets and find the ones that really make my sky pop. Ooh, that one's pretty nice and silky. And now that's coming in as a layer. So if I feel like undoing that and seeing it before and after, I can just turn it off. So let's make another layer for the foreground. And let's use the Brilliance Warmth filter to warm this up a little bit. And now let's add a little fog to the bottom. When I added that filter, it covered the entire thing. I can just add a local adjustment to limit where the fog appears. And I'll send that back as a layer in Photoshop. You can see the ability to work with masks within Photoshop gives me a lot more control. Let's try this with a portrait. This is a cool shot, but it could be a little more creative. And Color Effects is so good at just making things creative. I can just flip through these presets and check out wild different looks. I think I like Blue Monday as a good starting point. Now let's look at the filters and see what cool things we can do. I like the film effects faded, but that's a little too much. So let's just reduce the opacity and just add a little bit of that glow. I like that. I don't know if I want to stick with it, but I'm going to save this as a layer so I can always come back to it. So here I'll just make sure that this is saved as a new layer and I'll click apply. And now flipping between my changes and the original is very simple and you can see everything was non-destructive. We'll go back into color effects. Ooh, I like the photo stylizer here too. I can adjust the strength up and down. This really adds a lot of pop to it. And look, even within this filter, there are a ton of different styles I can choose from. Oh, I love that it's just adding so much color to an almost monochrome image. Yeah, I like style too there, but I'm just going to bring the opacity down a little bit and blend that in so it's not too much. We'll send that back as a layer in Photoshop and then just keep working. Oh, I like the reflector effect. See, this is simulating holding up a reflector. Switching between a gold and a silver reflector, you can see that it's adding gold to the shadows and I can adjust the light intensity here. It really looks just like a reflector. I can even change the position of the reflector from high to low. If you've ever used a reflector, this is exactly what it looks like. We'll send that as a layer. And I kind of like low key here. Let's see how the glow effects work. Yeah, I like that it's sort of hiding all the shadows for me. Just adding a ton of contrast. I can blow out those whites. I'll send that back as a layer too. And let's close out of this. There's the original, and then I can just apply these layers to see each different step that I took. So I can see which of these that I really like best. And for him, I think I'm liking the Blue Monday here, but there's no right answer because that's what it's about. It's about finding creativity. And when you do find a style that you like, you can apply that same effect to all of your pictures. And that helps to create and define a personal style for you. If you're sharing an Instagram, applying the same effects to all of your pictures would create a nice cohesive grid. And that's something people really like to see when they first look at your profile. Nick makes it really easy to apply the same presets. Like I could apply last edit here, but I can also go in here and open the plugin and then add favorite presets just by selecting the stars here. And now you can see if I were to undo all of this, I could very quickly just apply the bleach bypass preset with a single click. And there it is. And if you decide to modify it and customize it, you can save presets as your own. The third tool in the Nick collection that I want to show you is called analog effects. And this gives you a film look to your photos. We can switch between all these different presets and choose our best starting point. And you can see right away, these are adding grain. They're adding texture, they're adding borders, just like they did in the film era. Ooh, I like that one. And there's a ton of filters here too. Like let's check out light leaks. We can add a light leak and then this simulates maybe having an older junkie camera where light's actually pouring in. Sometimes you would say that that was ruining your pictures, but at the same time, that captures a certain vibe, a certain energy, and it makes it feel less perfect and a little more loved. Anything can be adjusted here. It can be customized. You can dial it up or dial it down to get just the look that you want. Check out the multi-lens feature here. I love the frames that make it feel like it was scanned in from a film roll. And maybe the coolest is the motion blur. You can select this and then dial down the blur strength a little bit and it just adds some movement to it. Like maybe the camera was rotating a little bit. It's about making your images deliberately less perfect. It's about adding emotion 
and feeling and a sense of being genuine. I really like zoom and rotate too. You can see I can adjust the rotate strength here and it kind of makes everything spin around it. And this works especially well for portraits. And you can see the before picture is more perfect, but the after picture is more emotional. It has more feeling to it. Whether you decide to use these really depends on what you're trying to convey, the clients that you're appealing to, and your own personal style. But the Nick Collection gives you the power to choose exactly what you want. It goes beyond the features that Lightroom or Photoshop offer, and you can see it inspires your creativity and allows you to get away from the computer as fast as possible so you can get back to shooting. Check it out at this link here. You can get a free trial. Download my files and work along with me. When you love it, you do not have to pay a subscription fee. You purchase it once and then you can use it forever. In the comments down below, tell me your own experiences with DxO, how you use it, how it inspires you. Bye.